Hi everyone, this is Tina Wu, Member Relations Coordinator at the Assembly of European Regions. As many of you might have heard, our committee plenaries in Kovasna County were unfortunately cancelled in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, today we will be talking about connectivity and infrastructure in Europe with Arna Engholm from the region of Vesternorland in Sweden. The floor is yours, Arna. My name is Arne Engholm and I'm representing the Liberal Party in the county of Western Norland. I'm a, a retired sales manager and a part-time politician. Uh, that is, I have been a full-time employee in the private sector and had, had politics like a hobby, so to say. So, a little bit about my county, Western Norland. Uh, that is located in the northern part of Sweden, around 400 kilometers north of Stockholm. Uh, the land area is about 21,000 square kilometers and is one of the most sparsely populated areas in Sweden, with about 11 inhabitants per, per square kilometer. And if you compare it with Sweden's overall, it has 25. And in the EU, uh, all over, it's about 118 uh, inhabitants per square kilometer. In Western Norland lives about 245,000 uh, people, and the majority is concentrated around the coastline. The structure of the economy is in the private sector, dominated by manufacturing and forest industry. The forest industry, for example, they need to get the wood from the inner part of the country to get them to the, to the plants at the coast in an efficient way. And they use both rail and road. Some is also imported by sea. After being processed, the products need then to be exported to their final markets. Regardless of industry, uh, enterprises in Western Norland has a long distance, and distance to both national and international markets, and that is a competitive, competitive disadvantage for them. So the infrastructure needs to facilitate easy access to single markets. Some example of what needs to be done uh, is better intermodality, a road network that supports seven tons trucks, a rail network that supports trains of 750 meters and axle load of 25 tons. Because of how sparsely populated it is, how would you say the connectivity within the region, um, also to other regions of Sweden and even to outside Sweden, uh, how's that connectivity and in infrastructure? The Botnian Corridor is an important link within the transnational transport system of goods in Northern Europe. It stretches out on both the Swedish and Finnish side of the Botnian Gulf. It connects east westbound and north southbound transnational links in Sweden, Finland, Norway and Russia. The railway infrastructure in the Botnian Corridor comprises several main railway stre stretches with uh, very various standards. For the East Coast Line, the connection between Sundsvall and Stockholm, which is a part of this corridor, there are continuous work for increased capacity, but we need double tracks due to capacity constraints. And so a little bit about the ports. They are also extremely important for large amounts of outbound and inbound cargo. For the many wood, paper and pulp industries, uh, in the region, it's common practice to use a combination of rail and sea transport for the export products. The ports are important, especially for the outshipping of export cost goods from the industries and for avoiding congestions at the single track railways in the northernmost part of the uh, Bothnian corridor. Um, about um, airports, region Western Norland has three airports, one in Sundsvall, Timrå, and one is called High Coast Airport, and the third one is Örnsköldsvik in the northern part of the region. All three of them have regular flights from and to Arlanda, but no direct connection outside the country. 
due to the structure of the economy with the dom dominance of exporting industry, there, are, there is a need of fast and easy communication to Europe, Asia, South and North America. Uh, so you can imagine air flight is of great importance. What are some of the challenges that you are facing, Investor Norland, and how are you handling it? Um, the main challenge has always been over overcoming the long distances. The Swedish railway network has, serious, has a serious weak spot, and that is the single track east coast line between Gävle and Hennesand. This is one of the longest and most heavily congested stretches of railway in Sweden. It passes through a number of cities with important industries. The current East Coast Line has steep inclination and sharp curves, limiting cargo weights and speed and creating frequent delays. This is one of the reasons why many companies prefer other transport, such as trucks and semi-trailers. They drive on the E4 highway parallel with the railway track, a route that will get their products to the final destination, but at the cost of greater environmental impact. We are talking about 200 tra trucks, 2000 trucks per day. So it's easy to understand what the difference a double track would be for the environment. How can interregional cooperation be used to further develop the connectivity and infrastructure in Europe? The aim of the Trans-European Transport Network's policy is to create a seamless cross-border transport network without technical barriers to strengthen social, economic and territorial cohesion in the EU. I think strong interregional cooperation is crucial when planning and developing cross-border uh, transport infrastructure to replace a patchwork of transport regions with a coordinated pan-continental network. One good example I would like to mention is Midstroket, an EU-funded project focused on upgrading the Mid-Nordic corridor between the cities of Sundsvall in Sweden and Trondheim in Norway. The project brings together municipalities, counties, regions, as well as the Swedish Transport Administration to tackle issues ranging from road safety to increasing capacity for rail freight. The idea is taken, the, the, the idea is that taken together, small steps will make a big difference to people, communities and business along this corridor. Another example that I would like to mention is the Bothnian Corridor, which is a collaboration between seven northernmost regions in, in Sweden, with the aim to improve the strategically important link from Stockholm and Örebro up to the border to Finland in Haparanda Tornio and the border to Nor Norway in the west, in practice to the port of Norway, which, which is an ice-free port all uh, year round. There is a, <clears throat> a continuous development of the Botnian Corridor and numerous projects are co-funded through the European Regional Development Fund and Interreg programs. Some of these projects have included collaboration with Norway, Norway and Finland and other EU member states. Sweden is on the forefront of the transition to a climate neutral society as per the EU Green Deal. And indeed, the role of regions to achieve this cannot be overstated. What has been done in your region to improve connectivity and infrastructure in line with this goal? The most important priority is the development of the Bothnian Corridor by expanding the East Coast Line from a single track railway to a double track, as I previously mentioned. Region Western Orland are together with the Evleborg region and the municipalities connected by line, the line owner of a company, Ostkustbanan, which was founded in 2015. The mission of the company is to accelerate the expansion of a double-track railway between the cities of Gävle, Sundsvall and Hennesand. 
The goal is to have the railway completely finished no later than 2030. So, to wrap up this, a double track railway from Hellesand to Gävle will be of great importance for the environment and Sweden and all of Europe. Thank you for joining us today, Aina, and providing insight on the importance of interregional cooperation in improving the connectivity and infrastructure in your region, but also in Europe. There are, as you mentioned, important environmental ramifications by improving the infrastructure, and I look forward to the completion of the double track between Gävle and Hanasan. And for all of our listeners, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at info at aer.eu or via social media at European Regions.